Hey everyone, uh, we're going to talk about time today. Uh, so this is going to be, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, but then also there's a little more complex uh, topic I want to talk about, maybe why we would do something like this. Uh, and it has to do with um, if you are using absolute time.seconds, which is a really common technique that we use for all kinds of different operators, uh, a lot of like noise tops, noise chops, or any any time you want to have uh, continuous motion. Um, it's a really super easy way to do that. You get into trouble when you have a long-term installation. Uh, so this topic is, is not so much talking about TD as a game engine per se, uh, but more just doing a, a big project that would be for a long-term installation, uh, which typically you want to keep the uh, the computer that's running everything just on all the time. Um, you can look up another uh, another topic, another video I have called Auto Start. Um, there's a execute dat little techniques for when things start up. But anyway, so an installation computer should remain on all the time. If that uh, is, if that's the case, then after a certain amount of time, our absolute time dot seconds is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And we get into some troubles with that eventually. So first I'll, I'll show like, so this is a really simple way to solve those, those troubles. Uh, and then I'll kind of go into why we do this and show what those troubles actually are and to, to understand uh, really why that's happening. Um, and so the solution is pretty easy. It's just based in this clock chop, which is amazing. Um, and for this, I mean, you could do this in any number of ways, but what I'm doing, I'm selecting the hour. Um, channel here and I'm saying uh, I've got a logic here uh, with bounds set to zero so when this goes to 23 which is 11 o'clock at night and then hits midnight that will that will become zero uh, so logic will be triggered uh, to be one uh, and then a chop execute is resetting the speed chop down here uh, so down here is 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 really um, you know, if, if I wanted to access something like an absolute time that seconds, actually I'm accessing this null chop right here. Um, so the speed and it's just constant as one. So it's, it's you know, increasing by one per second. Uh, so speed chop gets reset at midnight every day. Uh, and thus this value would never get above, uh, what, how many seconds are like 86,400? Uh, it resets back to zero. Um, so that's is super easy uh, and we could stop it there uh, and be like a one minute video but let's look at at why like why would we go to that trouble um, and at what point do we start to get that, that kind of trouble so let's go into here uh, and what I'm doing uh, so with this constant uh, I've got absolute time that seconds set up so far and I have this kind of setup. Uh, so usually the the chops will kind of truncate the the decimal point, um, just for readability sake. Uh, but I've got a little chop execute. It's just printing that value to the text port here. And let's do a little trick. Let's make this bigger. Whatever, thirty two. Okay, we can see that better. Okay. Uh, so here you can kind of see uh, that. There's a lot of decimal points. Um, so it, with pretty low numbers, there's more room in the, uh, I guess in the storage of that number to have really um, long precision of the uh, the mantissa. It's called the, the all the decimal points. And so that gives us really smooth movement through like a noise top or a noise chop or something like that. Um, but let's look over here. So if we just look up at the absolute time that class on the touch designer wiki, so we could confirm uh, so the second so that gives us a float value. Great. If we look at the um, this is the chop wiki here. Uh, let's go down. So right here, chop data channels are arrays of raw samples in 32 bit floating point format. So just confirming that anytime we have a value in a chop that is being stored as a 32 bit float. Um, and we can look this up here. This is just a little table I found online. So a 32-bit float, the largest value is enormous, 10 to the 38th power, uh, which in numbers of seconds, that's like way longer than the universe has existed. 
Uh, and typically we would have um, seven de uh, digits within that, that decimal range. So just a little, a little like facts about how we're handling the floats here. What happens though, so we've got these like really beautiful, like really lots of precision in the, the decimal points here with relatively small numbers. What if we got pretty high? Like after, let's say like a week, if this absolute time that segment was running, what would the, these values be? And I took the liberty of doing that math already. So you just trust me. So in one week, in seven days, there would be 604,800 seconds. Um, let's just do a little trick here. So I'm actually, um, instead of using this absolute time, just so I have a little extra control, I could do like a cooking show and like, you know, we, we cut and then suddenly I just leave this running for a week and we come back and like whatever the cookies are done in the oven. Um, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to do a little trick here and I'm going to add a speed chop. Um, because really what, what we're looking at here, it's, it's not really inherently a problem with absolute time that seconds. It's a problem with how, how the numbers are, are being stored as, as data. Uh, and we can show that with the speed chop uh, with a little more flexibility uh, just in this in this demo mode. So let's do a little arrangement here. So let's let's start here. Let's clear that. And OK, great. So this is just like an absolute time that seconds, right? We see lots and lots of um, precision on the decimal side. Let's zoom ahead as if as if we were in this for a week. Uh, and actually let's do maybe 50,000. And when I get to around 600,000, then we can kind of tell, okay, that's roughly, okay, that's been a little bit more than a week now. Um, so already we can see what happened. Uh, as the number um, on, on the left side of the decimal point increases, the precision within our decimal values decreases. So there's a kind of zero sum game almost where uh, if you have more precision here, you have less over here. As that precision over here increases, then on the decimal point it gets lower. Uh, so this, this is really where the problem comes in um, because now we don't have this really beautiful, smooth, um, gradual change in our decimal points. And we can see that if I hook up, let's do maybe like a noise. Got a little room here, okay. Let's do whatever, let's do like 1280, 720, doesn't really matter. And let's do a little something that we would very commonly use this for transient on the Z and that looks really wonky like that looks pretty crazy so there's like there's two things that are happening here where one it looks it's really jittery it's not smooth at all and secondly there's this weird uh, kind of glitchy thing happening there um, because of just this really high number that's in our translate um, Z property and just to show so this this little glitchy thing is because of the largest of this number, I could even throw in something, like if I did a modulus, like whatever, something like that. So now I, this number in TZ is now pretty low, but it's still really jittery because it doesn't have that decimal precision like we did before. And you can really tell at a glance, this is really kind of jittery, uh, but we did lose that little glitch because the numbers are actually lower. So yeah, so that's, that's it right there. So even over the course of a week, Anything that you're using for, um, for with absolute time that seconds, it's going to have this uh, really jittery behavior uh, as the decimal points get lower and lower. And let's just let's get kind of crazy here and keep going. It's going to like boost this number up super high. So now we're at about. So now we're at about two weeks. Or more than two weeks long. This is the like what is this, 1.3 million seconds now, and it just is going to get slower and slower because of the imprecision of the decimal points here. 
and this is fun. Let's just let's just go for a ride, and let's do another. Let's see, four weeks would be like two, something like two point four mil. So let's see, at, after about a month, if this was running, that's what it looks like now after one month. So it just gets worse and worse. So this eventually, um, there's no decimal point at all. Um, so one. One one final little point. So actually, in, in my mind, in the first video, in my mind too, what what I thought the reason was for doing this, and what I had read on the Facebook group or, or other places online, um, is that your computer might crash because if we think of a, a float, floating point number uh, is a 32-bit floating point number has a range of like 4.2 billion. Uh, there's 4.2 billion values in there. And so I thought if you actually get up to this number 4.2 billion, like that's when the crash would happen. Um, but actually, and this is kind of explained in this table here, um, because of the way, then I don't understand, and so I won't even try to explain it, um, because of the way the number is actually stored, uh, it can store up to 10 to the 38th power um, value, which is a bigger number than I need. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, but hopefully this shows why why you why you should not use absolute time at seconds for any long term installation and instead use this uh, clock plus a speed. Okay, thank you.